I just I want to know where you think or where you have Michigan State ending up. Okay, so this one, uh, you mentioned before, we're Michigan State guys. We're in those neck of the woods, so I might get a little hate here, but I think uh, I think we see some growing pains next year. Um, now, in terms of the, the program, I think the program will continue to trend up. I don't think it'll hurt recruiting at all. But I think you're looking at a 9-3 and three or 8-4 and four season, um, mostly because I think the offense regresses a bit. Um, without Kenneth Walker, uh, I think this this offense kind of changes a bit, and Peyton, Peyton Thorne is going to be forced to develop quickly. He's got a year under his belt, and he had flashes where he was really good. Uh, but in games where K-9 was banged up or hurt, things looked a little different. He looked like he had a little trouble. Um, the Ohio State one comes to mind. I know the Buckeyes are, you know, the Buckeyes are one of the best teams in the nation consistently, but he put up a crappy performance there. Um, Jaden Reed's coming back. I'm not too worried about the uh, receiving core. Um, Malik Carr is coming back. So, like, I think there are weapons, but without K-9, I just I, I want to see how Jay Johnson does um, in terms of play calling. Now, where I could be proven completely wrong is the defensive side of the ball, just because they got so many nice um, – they got that linebacker out of uh, UNLV. They got a couple of nice big guys um, recruiting and in the portal. So if their defense takes a step forward and their offense takes a little step back, they could still be a 10-win team. I just think – this season we are riding so high. I think it comes a little. I think things get a little more realistic next year. That's just, that's just my opinion, I guess. Well, and like, and it was almost sort of a euphoria this year too, right? And I feel like a lot of people are on that bus where they're thinking like that Michigan State is not like it's not realistic, especially this early in the rebuild to assume that Michigan and they could do anything, right? Like, like with with the way that Mel Tucker is utilizing the transfer portal. Anything could happen. I mean, right. realistically speaking, right? Like, like Kenneth Walker is the only reason, and that transfer portal is the only reason that Kenneth Walker was brought here. And Kenneth Walker, by virtue, is the only reason why Michigan State went eleven and two. I mean, it's a difference between an eleven and two team and a team that goes seven and five. I mean, seven and six because with the extra bowl game, they could have won that. But, 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 right? Like you're talking about a team that was five hundred before the addition of one player. And, and I think you're right in saying, too, that Michigan State is going to have to lean on Peyton Thorne. I think really what worried me is that we didn't see a lot from him against Pittsburgh, right? Like, like he wasn't great until the fourth quarter. Until the final 10, and, 10 minutes. Right. And, and, and that's one of those things where, that separates those great QBs from – the QBs that are average because every beat writer that I see, right? Like Colton Pouncey love his coverage, right? He did this whole thing on Peyton Thorne. Graham couch has been is reveled in Peyton Thorne loves the dude, right? Um, like we were talking to, um, the, uh, this was off the air, but we were talking to, uh, the co site expert at octopus thrower where you write and um, what is it? Uh, Nate Brown was talking to me, and it was crazy conversation. Loved it. But we were talking about Peyton Thorne and how he knows uh, Peyton Thorne's dad because Peyton Thorne's dad was a – well, now was a D3 college coach. And this, I think, was back when he were he – was at some high school or something or whatever, but he was talking to Peyton Thorne's dad when Peyton Thorne was a kid running around in the field. And so, like, so Peyton Thorne has, like, the smarts to be, to get where he needs to go, right? But, like, like, why is it that you see players who were so good in college, like Kellen Moore? Let's bring up Kellen Moore, right? Like, the dude's now an offensive coordinator for Dallas or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there was never that execution to the next level. Like, I need to see that jump right now. You know, because, like, that's kind of, again, what separates you from being great and and, and stuff like that. So, it's it worries me that he didn't do well until the end. And did he fix the – did he – was he aware and acknowledge the problem? At the, in the in the moment, that's something that not a lot of not a lot of guys can do. Like, yeah, he did that and he corrected it, he fixed it. But I need to see the prep. I need to see the the. You need to do that. You just need to to to, to be there. And I think that Peyton Thorne could be the difference between again like an eight and four and a ten and two. 
So yeah, he's he's going to be what what Michigan State rides or dies on. Uh, exactly. If he ends up having a fantastic season and those flashes he illustrated throughout the entire season, he had flashes of excellence. If he can make that more consistent, this team definitely can be a, a ten, maybe even eleven win team. Um, but for now, I just. I don't know. It's hard to put my chips all in, I guess. I'll just say that. Yeah. And well, and especially, you know, based just based alone on, on Michigan State's schedule. Like, I think that three yeah. easy losses right off the bat, Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, right off the bat. I wouldn't say I wouldn't I would move Michigan and Penn State into sort of in the middle territory. A little I was going to say, Penn, but, Penn State and Ohio State, or Penn State and Michigan are definitely beatable. I mean, so, on the road, Michigan's going to be tough, I guess, but... Penn, it, Penn State also. It would well, it, and again, it would depend for me, right? Because like I thought the 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 extension that Franklin was given, I thought that that was questionable just because we know who James Franklin is. But he also has the I, track record, so maybe Penn State believes in him more than I do. Like I would not have given James Franklin ten years and seventy five million dollars, mm-hmm. right? But but I would have given him an extension of any amount, like. I would have given uh, him two two sticks and a tadpole. I would have given him anything, you know, just because, like, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know that Michigan and Mich- and and Penn State are kind of in that same spot where they're like, if I get rid of my coach, then who do I get after? 